There's a big new development in the Trump-Russia investigation. Earlier today, House Intelligence Committee chairman and guy who once looked at a magic eye poster and can't snap out of it, Devin Nunes, <laughs> stepped aside from the investigation. <laughs> right? Is that true? Yeah. I like yeah. that quick. <laughs> He's gone. Do you know what this means? This means now a totally different Republican will be covering Trump's ass. <laughs> but keep in mind, this is not forever. Nuna said he is stepping down temporarily. It's only temporary, maybe 15 to 20 years, depending on which judge he gets. <laughs> you see, here's the deal. Nunes, Nunes is stepping aside because the House Ethics Committee is determined to investigate allegations that Nunes may have made unauthorized disclosures of classified information. Good news, Congressman Nunes. We found the leaker. He's in your mirror. <laughs> okay, the guy you shaved, wow. that's the guy. <laughs> um, what else? Oh, this is huge news. The fight continues over the confirmation of Supreme Court nominee and accountant looking up from his tax forms to dream of being a playwright, Neil Gorsuch. <laughs> Today in the Senate was a battle royale with cheese. Because you see, the Democrats, they took a stand. Breaking news from the Senate floor. The Senate has wrapped up now that first important vote. The vote tally, it was 55 to 45. And with that, that means the Democrats have successfully filibustered President Trump's Supreme Court nominee, Neil Gorsuch. Yeah, man. man. They did it. The Democrats won for about an hour because <laughs> then Senate Republicans forced an historic rule change to advance Gorsuch anyway. Well, it's like the saying goes. No, 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 no. Listen, it's like the saying goes. If at first you don't succeed, change the rules and now you win. <laughs> the rule change, uh, you may have heard of this, it's getting rid of the filibuster, a last resort commonly known as the nuclear option. Here's how it works. Democrats filibuster the nomination. So the Senate casts a vote to break the filibuster. When that doesn't pass, the Senate revotes on that same motion. When that doesn't pass, Majority Leader Mitch McConnell introduces a point of order that it should take 51 votes instead of 60 to overcome a filibuster of a Supreme Court nominee. And it's called the nuclear option because they need to make some part of it sound exciting. <laughs> now, not every Republican was on board. Not everybody wanted this. Mm -hmm. John McCain said Tuesday, this about anyone who would defend the nuclear option. I would like to meet that idiot. I would like to meet that numbskull that would say that. That, that after 200 years, at least 100 years of this tradition where the Senate has functioned pretty well, they think it'd be a good idea to blow it up. Whoever says that is a stupid idiot. You have to be pretty dumb for John McCain to call you a stupid idiot because he thought Sarah Palin could be president. <laughs> it's a bold stance. It's bold. It's a bold stance. But then that's the maverick, man. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the maverick, or it was, because today McCain voted for the nuclear option. <laughs> well, Senator McCain, in the words of an American hero, you're a stupid idiot. <laughs> That's not me. I think you're great. This other guy thinks you're an idiot. Speaking of stupid idiots, Donald Trump, uh, the president, the president has had a big a guest at Mar-a-Lago today, Chinese President Xi Jinping. There's a lot to work out between our two nations. Uh, the threat from North Korea, the uh, status of Taiwan, and how to pronounce this? China. 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 You know, China. 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 You'd think he would know how to pronounce it. It's on the label of all his neckties. Yeah. It's just... yeah. he put it on the back. Trump has been planning this meeting since the start of his campaign. I would not be throwing him a dinner. We've had this conversation. I'd get him a McDonald's hamburger and I'd say, we got to get down to work. Yeah. 
That's also his idea of a great first date. <laughs> All right, you've had your Big Mac. Now get to work on little Donnie. <laughs> now... <laughs> it's got... It's salty. It's got the special sauce. Now... <laughs> Trump... What? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> And oddly, sesame seeds. Now, I, Trump's going into this meeting pretty confident. He's feeling good. On the way down to Mar-a-Lago uh, on Air Force One, Trump told reporters, I think we've had one of the most successful 13 weeks in the history of the presidency. <laughs> I don't know if it's the most successful. Um, I can say it's not the least successful. William Henry Harrison died of pneumonia four weeks into his presidency. <laughs> still, that's nah, still better than Trump. It's still a little bit better than Trump. And Trump's doing a lot of crowing lately. I mean, you might even call him a cock. <laughs> to the New York Times, Trump made an extraordinary claim about a Democratic congressman. Elijah Cummings was in my office, and he said, you will go down as one of the great presidents in the history of our country. Really? I get the you will go down part, but after that, you kind of lost me. I'm going down. I don't... <laughs> I'm going down. You ain't wrong. Yeah. Let me remind you who we're talking about here. Elijah Cummings is a member of the Congressional Black Caucus, a lifelong progressive Democrat. So if this quote sounds a little far fetched, it's because, yeah. <laughs> Representative Cummings, in fact, released a statement saying, I have said repeatedly that Trump could be a great president if, if he takes steps to truly represent all Americans rather than continuing on the divisive and harmful path he is currently on. So apparently, no matter what you say to Donald Trump, he only hears the good words. <laughs> Everything else just sounds like the teacher from Charlie Brown. <laughs> wah, 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 w